Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and welcome to November. And uh, the first Wednesday of the month is our Camberbell Society, and this month you are not going to be disappointed. Now, I have to tell you, we've been through several of these. I think we started this in March, so we have done about six or more. And by now, you should be a Camberbell expert. Well, I hope that you will be because this month there's a lot going on, and I have to tell you. I had a project jump out of the hoop. I put something on the wrong side. I put the zipper head on the wrong end. And uh, and yeah, but I still have two bags. That's right. I made one. Then I wasn't happy because of some snafus in the video. And don't worry, I'll point it out to you when we get to it. And then when I made it again at the shop, I just had it just popped right out of the hoop. So I'm going to show you obviously how to make this bag, but I'm also going to make sure that you learn from me how you can be a little bit more careful with this project and make sure that you eliminate the mishaps because, you know, this project is just too cute to give up on. <laughs> now that I properly scared you, let's get started. <laughs> well, like any month, our Kimberbell Society projects are super cute. So our pineapple cross body bag, you can see it there on the left is our project for November. And don't forget, you're going to buy your kit from BerninaofNaperville.com. But you have to note that although you are buying the designs and the kit from Bernina of Naperville, digital files and Kimberbell instructional PDF are emailed to you by Kimberbell Direct. What we provide you in the link of the description of this video is our supplemental presentation deck that I use in the video. And also I use it to send you other links. So for instance, if you're watching the video and you want to download this PDF, you can just simply click here on the buy it here to go to our Bernina of Naperville website where you will see our Kimberbell Society product. And you just hit the drop down menu and we can go to November and you can either buy the fabric kit and design or if you are participating in a Kimberbell Society somewhere else and you're only getting the design and they don't provide you a fabric kit, well, we also have your back there for a fabric kit only. So you would pick either one of those. And then you can see coming up for December, that's cute too. But anyway, I digress. So our fabric kit and design is what you're going to choose if you want all of it. And there's also sometimes, if you're new to this, a little bit of confusion on when you buy the designs from us and you get the Camberbell Designs Direct. Well, how do you get them? So. I'm not going to make you watch this video right now if you've been doing this, but when you download our handout, just click here and I walk you through getting your designs from Kimberbell. We are providing you in this kit one piece of light mesh cutaway. You're going to need to supply an additional piece from your stash this month. We're going to need fusible backing for the outer back piece only. For those of you that could be SF-101 or it could be Fusible Woven, but we are using the Kimberbell branded Fusible Backing, you're going to need two pieces of batting, you're going to need two D-rings, and four thumbtacks. And we are providing all of those things I just talked about in your kit along with the fabric. So let's talk about the fabric. First, we're going to start by finding all of the lists of fabric in the Kimberbell provided instructions. And there's a lot of cutting if you wanna make this bag because this pineapple block has a lot of pieces. So let's look in the kit. And it comes in this cute little package. If we look in here and see those glorious fabrics, there's our poly mesh stabilizer there. We also have a zipper. And this zipper is totally large enough to make your bag, but these are our little fall fabrics that we're gonna use to make up the bag. The hoop that we're gonna use this month is a maxi hoop, if because there are two sizes that you're gonna get, but we're doing the larger size, and that fits in our Bernina maxi hoop or our Bernina jumbo hoop. You're gonna need a water-soluble marking pen, and you can use isocord thread if you like. We kind of picked out Candlewick 0781 or Corsage 1840. And then whatever color you pick, you're also going to put that in the bobbin as well. But this month, I only used one thread and I used the same thread in the top and the bottom. 
and I used a cotton thread. I used just a peachy color orophil that I had a little bit left of, but once again, you can pick anything because it's not about multiple colors this month. It's about making something in the hoop that's more like you quilted it and you constructed it without anybody knowing that you actually embroidered this. There are some additional supplies. You're going to definitely need a sturdy, strong point turner like the OESD point and press tool. In the video, you're going to see that I used my uh, thinner Hera marker slash point turner. And you know what? It didn't quite make it, everybody. This thing is so heavy, it bent my little tip on that tool. So metal is what you should do for sure. A seam ripper, just in case you make some mistakes. And I've actually given you a link here to a lit seam ripper, which is really very nice on the eyes. And lots of stabilizer tape. The tearaway kind will need to be carefully removed at places, which is, is fine. And the water-soluble kind needs to be dissolved, which means you will need to potentially wash your bag at the end. So you need to kind of decide, do you want to pick something out with tweezers or do you want to wash something? And then we just got this new Laura Star iron that steams with the board unit. I just love it. It's their entry-level board and iron system. You might want to check one of those out. And then I mentioned tweezers, and I have a link there to my favorite pair. Now let's turn our attention to the cutting. So you want to be sure to follow the Camberbell instruction layouts, which start on page 6 for the 8-inch by 12-inch bag. And on all of the five pieces, you want to make sure that you count, that you cut accurately to get the most use out of the fabric provided in the kit. But one thing I want to mention, and that is for fabric one, which is the outer bag and the main fabric, basically. It's the um, more solid pink with the little seeds in it. On this fabric, there is a little bit of an error, and I don't know what went on. Their instructions say for the 8-inch by 12-inch bag that you need 1-inch D-rings, but their cutting instructions are for half-inch D-rings. So when you're making a D-ring strap and you want to do it the way that they're telling you, you're going to take whatever the width of the D-ring is and multiply by 4. So for the smaller bag, it's a half an inch. So a half an inch times four is two inches, which is what Camberbell tells you to cut. But with the larger bag, they want you to have one inch D-rings, which is what we included in your kit. You actually need to cut one inch times four, which is four inches. Now, the other thing is they're telling you that you need to cut two straps. Well, I think a 80 inch strap is a little bit too big. So, so I'm recommending, if you see here on this diagram, I'm recommending that on fabric one, you cut everything out, but you leave the width of fabric there four inches to cut for your strap. And then you're going to find another piece of scrap left over and cut a four by four and a half inch piece that will be your D-ring tab. So the four inch And that is going to give you your strap that you're going to top stitch and sew with your sewing machine. So I also like to put fusible woven in my strap. So for the actual strap that's cut four inches by the width of fabric, I am pressing fusible woven in there to make it a little bit stiffer. However, because we have a lot of thickness, ladies and gentlemen, in this project, when you do your D-ring tabs, I don't want you to put any interfacing in there at all. I simply want you to cut the four by four and a half inch and press those up just like you, you don't have, you know, without any additional interfacing or stabilizer in there. So if you do this, you should have a very good experience. So let's talk about sewing these straps once you have them created. So I'm using my Bernina number 10 Foot. I'm using a number 10C, but you could also use a 10D. And if you do not have a machine with nine millimeter wide stitching or dual feed, you can use a regular number 10 foot. And a 10 foot is an edge stitch foot. And it's got a little guide in the middle of it. And it allows us to move like our needle position and line that central guide up to get a perfect top stitch away from an edge. And in this case, I'm gonna move my needle position 
three clicks to the left and butt my little folded edges up to that line and get my top stitching on both sides of my big strap and also both sides of the smaller piece that's gonna make up my tabs for my D-rings. So now we wanna make sure that we properly prepare some of our fabrics. So for the backing fabric that is gonna be for design one, and we'll get to that in a moment, we wanna just put fusible backing on the back fabric only. We don't wanna use fusible backing on any of the other projects that are gonna be on the bag. We're gonna fuse that on, and then we need to do a little bit of pressing to some other pieces. So we are gonna press, the main fabric has two pieces that you need to cut that are two and a half inches by nine inches, and those are the above zipper fabric and the below zipper fabric. And you're gonna press those in half and just put them aside. Then you're gonna take the above zipper lining fabric and you're gonna fold that. I mean, honestly, you can fold that in half as well like I did. Kimber Bell is recommending that you fold a half an inch down from that. Then on your below zipper fabric, you're gonna fold that a half inch down on one short edge. And then once you press these and get them done, you're gonna put them aside. So now for the design, this month's project is made up of two designs. The quilted back of the bag, that's the pe the fabric that we just only use the fusible woven on that part of this quilted part of the project. And then the bag top, which is going to include the zipper and other bag embellishments. And the first piece goes relatively easily. So we're going to pick that back piece, which is called KDDE202 slash 11 slash eight by 12 pineapple crossbody bag quilted back. So with the crossbody bag quilted back, your first, after you hoop the stabilizer up in the hoop, you're going to stitch a placement line that shows you where to put the batting. Then after that, you're gonna place your batting down on that piece and you're gonna stitch the next color, which is going to hold the batting down. That's the tack down stitch. Then you're going to trim close to the edge of the batting, and then you're gonna place your backing fabric, the one that's been fused with the fusible backing, right side up on top of that piece. Then you're going to stitch that placement line. Don't trim anything, do the quilting, and then, then you're also going to stitch these registration marks. Now the registration marks, you can change to a more visible color, but I would do that with your bobbin thread. So it shows up a little bit more. And then once that stitches out, you're gonna turn your hoop to the backside, use that water soluble marking pen to mark a T at the top. Then you can just trim your stabilizer, take it out of the hoop, and then trim your stabilizer even with the fabric and put it aside. Now that we've gotten the easy hooping out of the way, I think it's fitting to just go through this process methodically. So we're going to select our bag front and it looks like a whole bunch of stuff is going on and a whole bunch of stuff is going on. But the first thing that's gonna happen after we prepare our piece to be stitched, that is hooping up another piece of the poly mesh only in the hoop, doing the placement line again, putting your batting on top of that, then stitching color number two. And color number two is actually a tack down of the batting, but it's also kind of laying out the diagram for your piece. And there is a diagram in the Kimber Bell instructions that you might want to refer to because it has the numbers on it. So all of that cutting that you did, all of that organizing of all the pieces with the little labels that Kimber Bell provided you, and you cut that out and you did all of the things. Well, now you're going to take that template next to your sewing machine so you can keep track of where you're putting what. 
So you're going to follow that diagram pretty methodically on the next few colors. And it, with everything, it starts with piece one. So after your diagram and your color number two stitches out, you're going to place fabric number one or piece one from fabric number one in the center over that square that's in the center. Fabric number three is a placement line where you're going to line fabric number two pieces that are two and a half inch by four and a half inch up to. So then that's going to stitch. And then the next, after you line your pieces of fabric number two up to that line, it's going to stitch this line, which is color number four. You're going to flip your fabric over. Then it's another placement line where you're going to align another one of those two and a half by four inch pieces of fabric number two up to it. Stitch color number six, flip it over, stitch a placement line, line up another two and a half by four inch piece of fabric number two, flip it over, stitch, flip it over, then stitch another placement line, align the last two and a half by four inch piece of fabric number two, stitch color number 10, and flip that over. Now, one thing that Camberbell wants you to do is to trim some excess fabric underneath these pieces, which I did in my first bag. When I made a second bag, I didn't do any trimming and they both look lovely and you can't tell the difference. So if you wanna make this a little bit of an easier project, don't do the cutting. Once we have like this little diamond piece in the hoop, we're gonna stitch another placement line that's on the diagonal. And this is a placement line, we're gonna stitch that, and then we're gonna take a piece that is two and a half inches by four and a half inches of fabric number three, and we're going to stitch that down. Then we have another placement line for a two and a half by four and a half inch piece of fabric number three, and then we're gonna stitch that down. And we're gonna continue this process until we have finished all of those two and a half by four and a half pieces of fabric three. Then it's back to fabric number two again, where we're gonna now use fabric number two pieces that are two and a half by four and a half inches. And we're gonna go subsequently around that with the placement line, the stitch down line, the placement line, the stitch down line, all flipping and covering this piece. And everything goes quite lovely. No problems, blah, blah, blah. We keep stitching and flipping all the way around. And then we just need to make note that by the time we get to piece number 26, which is at actually fabric number four, and it's two and a half by four, we are just covering the little corners of this design and that will complete the patchwork square of our bag. Color number 59 is going to be a stitch down line that allows you to trim the excess fabric away. And then color number 60 is your zipper placement line. And you're going to trim the batting away between these two pieces very carefully. And this is where you are going to put you, you not me, you are going to put your zipper head on the left side of your bag. I put mine on the right, which meant I had to pull out a little bit of stitches when I went to open the zipper, but just, you know, keep that in mind. But color number 60 is going to stitch out some registration marks and you're going to place your zipper right down the middle of these pieces. You don't have to cut it. You don't have to shorten it. You don't have to do anything like that at this point, but you are going to tape it down so it doesn't slide around on you. 
Color number 61 is going to stitch the zipper down. And then after the zipper stitches down, you're going to take your below zipper outer piece, the pink one, the one that's folded in half, and you're going to take the raw edge of that piece and align it. to that stitch trim line from, a, from your previous step. And then once that stitch is down, you're gonna flip it up to go right underneath the zipper coils and stitch color number 63. Before we stitch color number 64, we're gonna turn, we're gonna take our hoop off the machine and turn it upside down. And we're gonna very, very carefully trim the poly mesh stabilizer out from under the zipper. And you don't want to get too close to the stitching line because you definitely don't want to cut the stitching line to do this, but you're going to do this carefully. And then you're going to take your lining bottom piece that's folded over a half an inch and place it carefully right under the zipper using your tape to secure it so it doesn't fall off. <laughs> and then we're gonna take it over to the machine. And we're stitching the lining placement piece here. And then once that is complete, we're going to take our above zipper piece. And remember, this is pre-folded and we're gonna line that folded edge up to the zipper coils and stitch it into place carefully. Now, you might wanna use tape here. I didn't because, you know, I wasn't thinking but um, just make sure that this doesn't shift around on you when you stitch this out. Then you're gonna take your hoop off of the machine, turn it upside down, and put your folded lining piece up to the back like so. And then that is going to be taped into place so everything is secure. And then we're going to stitch this little rectangular box that goes above the zipper to hold everything into place. And now at this point, after this stitches, you can stitch the next piece, which is the quilting, the all over quilting design that goes over just a little bit towards the top of this piece and then on the quilt body of the bag. And just make sure that you don't leave this unattended because you've got a lot of floppy edges here, which we are going to address later in this video. But you just want to make sure that nothing flops over and gets on the foot because at this point, if this, if anything jumps out of the hoop, it's going to be some tears, maybe on my part and your part. <laughs> so now it's time to insert those tab pieces into our one inch D rings. And you're going to stitch down some little tack marks to know where to put these guys. And you're going to have your expert tape on hand because you are going to tape these babies down because we don't want them moving anywhere. We don't want them creeping under the foot. You can imagine the mayhem that may ensue if we just threw caution to the wind at this point. So once those tack down pieces stitch, you're going to align the raw edge right on exactly on that line of your D-ring tabs, and then you're gonna securely tape them. Tape these babies so that they don't move at all, please. <laughs> and then one thing I'd like to do before we continue is change our presser foot pressure in our embroidery module. And that is really simple. You go into settings, you pick your embroidery hoop, then you select the presser foot or the fabric thickness. And that's actually loosening your presser foot pressure when you change it to 10 millimeters. Once you feel everything is secure, it's safe to stitch. And this is where I would really encourage you to slow the speed of your machine down so it doesn't go crazy on these pieces. And yes, I am using a size 90 embroidery needle for this. And see there, there's a little accident. Now I stopped it in time, but this is just how vigilant you have to be with this. Really go slowly, don't leave the room, you get it. 
Well, now here's the fun part here. Now that everything's taped down and here is the disadvantage of putting your zipper head on the right, I had to kind of cut loose some threads there so I can unzipper it. But you can see my tabs, I removed the tape on those and now I'm gonna just unzipper this. Oops, it's stuck a little bit more on some thread. Be careful here because we don't want it to wiggle out of the hoop. All right. All right, there we go. So we wanna unzip that about three quarters of the way. And there, look at that. We almost have a bag. We have the top of a bag. And now it's time to place the backing into position. So we're gonna turn over our hoop and we're gonna take those four thumbtacks that were included in the kit. And these are sharp, by the way. <laughs> and then we are going to put these through each four corners. We're gonna place them right in the very spot, stick them right through, and be careful not to poke your finger on the other side. And you're gonna do all four corners. And then, you know, there was enough friction on these tacks that I really wouldn't have needed to, but Kimberbell recommends that you tape the tacks into position so they don't fall off. So, you know, always better to be safe than sorry. So go ahead and tape those down so they don't wiggle. And then turn your hoop over. And now we're going to take that pre-quilted back that we did in hooping one and take its little marked pieces. You're gonna line those guys up right into position over. You're gonna be very careful once again to get it right on that registration mark. <laughs> poke, poke. And this isn't really as hard as it looks here. It's just, I've got like this little weird camera holding thing. I keep bumping it because I'm wearing a baseball hat in, <laughs> while I'm filming this. And then you just do that same process with all pieces. Now I want to show you, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but there's a little boo-boo here. I did not pay attention and my T is at the bottom but I'm gonna let you know a little secret. It didn't matter because it came out just fine, exactly like this. <laughs> but please put your tea at the top. So you know what, little mishaps happen, right? So now we're stitching our quilted backing onto our main front piece here. And once again, I would recommend going a little bit slowly because you know, there's a lot of thickness that we're stitching through and all of that. And um, this time, in this situation, we are stitching a total closed rectangle, which is why it's really important that you unzippered that zipper prior to this step. Otherwise, we would have another problem to deal with. But now is a really, really important thing because I, this is where I goofed up. This is where I did the unthinkable, the back lining. So I had to go to the store and film this the next day because I was just so dejected. I, you know, was just so silly. I had read through all of these other things in the instructions so very carefully that when I came to the very last and final step of putting the bag back lining on, I forgot to take my hoop off, turn it upside down, and tape the lining to the backside, underside of the hoop. Which means that it can still be a cute bag, it's just not covering all of those raw edges and everything that makes the magic of this bag happen. So by doing it the correct way, the way I did when I got back to the store, is we are basically encapsulating all of those raw edges and we're hiding them. 
And it's all, after it stitches out, it's all in how you turn it inside out through the lining first and poke everything, then turn everything inside out again through the zipper. And I used my um, Nifty Notions Hera marker end to poke things out. And this stuff is so thick, I actually bent my hair marker. So I definitely recommend that you get the uh, OESD Expert Point and Press metal um, piece because that thing is not going to bend. And uh, that's that's about it. It 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 came together really well. The straps went on together very easily. Um, just kind of folding those over about, I think I did about an inch and a half and just make sure that they're even. Um, and yeah, it's super cute now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and as we're looking through here now, you can see on the inside that everything on the second bag was turned nicely. Now, I didn't yet hand sew inside the bottom of that opening where we turned the piece, but I will get to it. And um, I pressed it well and trimmed all my little threads. And yeah, I mean, it's cute. I like it. It's and I love the fabrics we chose, I have to say. <laughs> well, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you learned from my mistakes. And I seriously hope that you put only the good things in this bag. So if you like this tutorial and you want to see others just like it, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. In the meantime, you got a lot of stitching and flipping to do.